Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be doing something that I quite enjoy. We're doing some more networking, but we're also going to be doing some Python built in to that whole world. Now in this channel, I do a lot of uh, PFSense and networking and sort of cyber attack type things with sort of a focus on networking as kind of like my, my meat and potatoes here. But today I'm going to be bringing in Scapy as a, a Python module. It's super interesting and it's crazy powerful. If you're in even remotely interested in automation of Python and security, and in particular, in particular networking, then Scapy is something that you're going to have to learn. Today we're going to go through some of the basics of using it, highlighting some, some fun things that we can do, and we're just going to have a good time. All right, let's take a look at our first Python script. Now, inside our script here, we're going to be calling our Scapy module. We want all of it, so we're going to do scapy.all and import everything. And we have an IP address that I am setting inside there. So now just to validate that we can get there, we are going to actually ping that machine and show that we can actually get there. That's important because it wouldn't really much do much if we can't get there. An interesting thing within the Scapy module is that when we think about the OSI layers, we have right? Physical, data, network, transport, session, presentation, application. We can build unique things at each of those layers, and then we package them together and then send it off to our destination. So what are we going to do first? We're going to create our IP layer, IP layer. And within Scapy, we have a function IP, and we can set a destination and have it be whatever that value is that I put inside of that variable. Within that IP, we can do a lot of work within all of those elements of the header. If I were to jump on over to Scapy here, the Scapy module, I'm going to run it. I'm going to do a really cool command where I can actually look at all of the different pieces of the header that I can manually manipulate. So we're going to do an ls, and then we're going to do ip within there, and we'll hit enter. And inside here, we've got a bunch of different things that we can set. So we have version, tos, len, frag, time to live, and we can we can manually do those all those things. Over here, I've got destination, which over in my script here, you can see that I'm setting the destination ip part of the header to that IP address. We're just showing here that we can do the same job in two places, but what we're focusing on today is doing that work inside of a Python script. Now we know that if we're gonna have a packet that's gonna go across a network, we are going to be requiring to use that transmission control protocol, that, that TCP. Right? And if we look at the variable here, we've got a TCP layer. And inside that layer, we're going to set some elements within that header. So we've got a D port, destination port. We've got our flags, We're a sin flag. If I were to do ls tcp, we can see all of the elements of the header within tcp that we can manipulate. So check some window flags, okay? Great. Now I've got two specific layers made over here. Now I want to, in my Python script, merge these things together. So we're going to do a packet. It could have been anything. It could have been the letter A, and it would have been fine. But for us, we're going to call it a packet so we can sort of see what we're, what we're looking at easy. Inside Scapy, we're going to have a forward slash. And what that does for us is that it merges these two things together. So we've got the IP layer together. We've got the TCP layer there. And part of this script is we're going to show the whole packet that we made and then after we show it we're going to send it let's go ahead and do that as always because at red blue labs we love wireshark here me i like wireshark we're going to run wireshark and look at this packet as it's being sent I'll start the listening and then we are going to run it if i can get there <laughs> there we go I 
Let's run it. And one packet sent. Let's hit stop. Bring that on over here. And it's right at the bottom. Let's zoom in on that. And beautiful. We see from my Kali, which is a 1.76 source port of 20, going to 50.11 on port 80. Great. We have a, a Synac coming back at that machine. And then we have a, a reset that's been triggered because the 176 wasn't expecting to get a Synac. So it's responding with a reset. That's normal network behavior. But we can see that Wireshark is doing its job and we and it's it's all there. It's great. So what's the what's the value of of doing this? Well, I mean, you've seen on this channel where I've made packets with HPing3, right? I can send off a, a SYN packet a count of one to port 80 on a certain IP address. Great. We can do the exact same thing inside of Python using Scapy, and we can get a lot more verbose than what HPing3 can do. HPing3 is a great tool for quickly making packets that need to be fired off. If I really want a very specific structure for a packet, that's where Scapy comes in and it shines. There's That's a quick look at a very basic Python script Let's kick it up a notch and look at another script and see how that one works, adding a little bit more complexity. Not much different in this one, but in this particular case, I'm adding a payload to it. So I really want that, that raw data to be appended to that packet. And we're going to see that inside of Wireshark in a moment here. But this is the same. I'm slapping that IP address in here. I'm creating that IP layer. I'm creating the TCP layer exactly like the previous script script but this time I'm, i do have a video about sending secret messages via ping this would be kind of a similar thing except this is a bit more um just straightforward and more efficient than than that method again take note that we're using our forward slash here and we are packaging these things together ip layer tcp layer and then we're going to bring inside of that that raw data that we want and then we're going to send that packet off let's go ahead and send that packet beautiful we can see the packet has made it to its destination let's go down to 1.76 and take a peek at what's going on and if we look at this beautiful right over here there's our raw data that we sent inside that packet. So you could do that with anything. You could, you could say anything. Why would we do that? <laughs> I mean, it would be kind of a fun CTF thing. There, this is pretty easy to find in a CTF, but still kind of interesting and would be, a, would be a fun flag for a capture the flag event. Here, I want to actually change some information. So I've got, I've got another machine on my network here. I am... 1.76, I have another machine on the network as well, it's a 103, it's a new Ubuntu machine, doesn't really matter, but we're going to modify our script here to use 103 as its, its information that needs to be inside of this script, pretty complicated, 103, <laughs> and so inside of this this particular script, what I want to do is set the, the source IP address and the destination IP address so that when it gets sent, it's going to a particular machine, in this case, destination being 50.11. But I want that 50.11 to believe that it was a different machine. And actually, I don't even need this value here. Gonzo. What else can we change? I have actually added a source port to our TCP part of the header. Okay, let's look at that. So S port, that's pretty straightforward, right? It's source port, so 8,000. An arbitrary number that I picked between 1 and 65,534. 
doesn't really matter. This is a demonstration. Destination port, 80, and the flag is going to be a sin. You know, you can actually do other things too. You could do a sin ack if you really want. You could do a push ack if you want. You could do a reset. But in this case, we want to do a sin flag. Get Wireshark running again. Send that. And let's take a quick look. Remember, we wanted to set the source as 1.103. Ubuntu didn't really send anything. We just generated a packet that had that information in it. And it's right here. Take a, take a peek at that. <laughs> it's a 1.103 as the source. Awesome. Source port, 8,000. Going to our destination, 50.11. Beautiful. Destination port of 80. Bing, bang, boom. Now... What I really, really like about this is that we can actually expand this here. And if we look at the information here, 50.11, which is a real machine in a, in a different network in my home lab, actually responded with a SYNAC. It doesn't know that I made a fake packet and sent it off. Again, like, again, like this machine responded with a reset, which is normal. But this machine here, 50.11, didn't know that the SYNAC was made by somebody else. A fake. Okay. What we're, what we're seeing here is some of the power that Scapey can give us. Right? Why, why do we use tools like this? We use it because we have to do testing inside of a network, inside of our home lab, it's with our client sites. How does a firewall respond to various types of network traffic? Well, it's not just going to happen naturally, most, most likely. You have to generate it so that we can get that, that, that action happening so we can see what does that firewall do? What does my network do? Let's kick it up just one more notch here. Now we understand that we can spoof IP addresses and create false packets that get sent off, and then the other machine thinks that it's a real packet, now let's go ahead and actually grab a Mac address from a real machine and insert that Mac address into our Python script. I have a Mac address here, but it's not the it's not the right one. Let's go and grab a real one. Okay. Pretty straightforward. I mean, I've got some machines on my network. We're going to do a net discover very fast. We're going to do a little bit of a blast across the entire network. See what it comes back with. It's going to come back with that 103 machine right there. That's the 103. And here is its MAC address. Beautiful. Let's copy that. And we're going to insert that into our script right here. We can see that it ends in a 38. So watch for the number 38 in that last part of the MAC address. I've got the, the source IP address. And we're going to be sending a packet to the gateway of this home network and we're gonna be using a broadcast Mac address here and just like we saw on the other scripts we're gonna to have to package different parts of this packet with the important information so we need to have an Ethernet frame and how we build an Ethernet frame is just just like this Ethernet we're gonna insert our source new Mac address and then our destination Mac Okay, good. That Ethernet frame is done. Then we're going to do our IP address. We're going to set the source IP address, which is this one. Destination, which is this one. Again, we'll get slapped in there. And we're going to send a very generic ICMP packet. Okay, so this one here is just a generic request. And then finally, we, we combine everything together and we are ready to... <laughs> fire off this packet so let's go ahead and do that and then look at what happens <laughs> let's set our wireshark filter to icmp so we can watch for that immediately set that to running okay so it's looking for stuff run our script and now let's go and dive into this packet that we made we made this packet it was awesome if we look on down to the information, we, we can see right away that the 103 is the source IP. We chose that. We chose ICMP. We chose the destination of 1.1. 1 
the piece that is really fascinating here, and the part that I really like, is that look at look at our our MAC address here. Remember, I said to pay attention to it looking like a a thirty eight. Over here, we've got that thirty eight here. This is that MAC address that we chose. You could do that with anything. You could do a a MAC lookup for any kind of device that you want, and uh, bring that in here and sort of parody in a way. A, a different unique kind of device because all all devices have a mac address if they're going to be connected to a network i'm what i'm hoping people can see is that we can we can manipulate some of the information inside of a python script with scapy and generate all kinds of unique things and that we can do um so maybe a potentially a man in the middle attack or maybe an arp arp spoofing or like uh cash poisoning is something that we could do with this I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.